Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Uh, hi, uh, welcome to this presentation on Theano Parlant 2 and LibGPU <coughs> GPU Array. I am Frédéric Bassin and uh, Bart Van uh, Meribauer. Uh, we are from the LISA lab at the University of Montreal in uh, Canada. Uh, I know I look like an undergrad, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, my eighth year. I'm uh, a staff at the LISA lab uh, at the university. So at a high level, I present our software stack. It is based on uh, Python. Then there's the uh, NumPy, SciPy, and LibGPU array that provides some functionality. Theano build on top of that, and there's Parent 2 that is on top of uh, Theano. So uh, I suppose you know Python, but it's an uh, object-oriented uh, coding language. NumPy provides the base object that we use in Theano. It's an n-dimensional uh, array object, and it provides many scientific computing functionality. SciPy add a sparse metric object and even more scientific computing functionality. LibGPU array provide a GPU and dimensional array that is based in C and it works for CUDA and OpenCL. Theano itself is a compiler. It works on a symbolic com a graph and can and the user can do graph manipulation, for example, doing the derivative. And Parlant 2 is the machine learning framework on top of that software stack. So uh, Python is a general purpose, high-level, object-oriented language. It emphasizes code readability. There is a very big uh, standard library and many uh, optional uh, packages that can exist. It is uh, dynamically typed and the uh, memory management, management is automatic. One of the inconveniences of Python, it can be considered as slow as it is an interpreted scripted language, but it is easily extensible with C, and there's many of the software like Theano that use that functionality to give a uh, great speed up. And this is, uh, and Python is pretty popular in web development and scientific communities. Uh, scientific communities. So uh, one of the problems for uh, HPC on Python is that all object or all elements are object event floats. So that's not great. But NumPy provides the n-dimensional arrays. The arrays, like was told in the previous presentation, re allow to do slices on that return view, and the slices can be shredded. Uh, so NumPy provides many uh, operations like LMYs, linear algebra, Fourier, random numbers. SciPy provides more than that. Uh, it uses uh, solvers, optimization algorithms, there's MATLAB compatible. There's many other libraries that I won't talk about for plotting and uh, more high-level uh, interactive uh, shell. So what's missing with that stack? It's all operations are non-lazy. That means they must be evaluated as soon as the line is saw. Uh, it is bound to the CPU. There is no uh, symbolic representation, and there is no automatic differentiation, and there is no automatic optimization for speed or for numerical stability. That's what Theano tried to provide. Theano by itself is a domain-specific language that is tolerated for science numeric computation. We try to mimic as much as we can the NumPy syntax. It, can, it compiles most expressions to C for CPU and or GPU. Uh, we limit the expressivity of Python that can be uh, handled by uh, Theano. For example, there is no subroutine, so we can do global optimization on the computation graph. It is strongly typed, so we can generate the good code beyond the scene uh, to C. As the object or array object, there is directly in the user graph computation 
a very high level of parallelism, so we can efficiently use uh, the, the GPU at this level. And there is support for looping and uh, branching. So Teano had many automatic optimization for speed and numerical precision. As Python allow easy extensibility with C code, we keep that with uh, Teano, so Teano can reuse SciPy, Blast, Citon, Numba, PyCuda, CUDA for uh, speed up. And there we can use, in fact, uh, everything that is accessible from C. Uh, so we do automatic differentiation on the graph, but we also have R operation and L operation that are used for Asian free optimization. So you don't need to compute all of them uh, manually. It can be done automatically by TNO. And we support sparse matrices on the CPU. So uh, Pylon 2 is a machine library. It is made for researchers. So if you want a black box system, don't look into Pylon 2. I know there's a startup that use Pylon 2 and provide the black box uh, interfaces. Uh, Pylon 2 was made to provide, uh, was made to make, <laughs> sorry, uh, the goal of Pylon 2 is to make the research easier. So we wanted to make it easy for the user to specify variant of different uh, machine learning algorithms and try different combinations. It is very modular and the configuration, the user can con use Pylon 2 via two interfaces via a YAML configuration file or directly in Python. Pylon 2 contains many scripts for via visualizing weights and plotting monitoring value. So uh, just a little bit how it works. There's TNO that provides the base uh, layer for object. In the graph, you will have just an element-wise multiplication and you will build on those uh, basic elements. Pylon 2 give a layer level of representation when you can have one layer of your neur neural network, for example. The fact that the gradient is defined at the basic element makes that just swapping some basic element in your computation graph makes that you don't need to re-implement the gradient. The gradient is made directly on the TNO level. And there's the other project, it's the new West project, it's libgpu array. <coughs> it is a common and dimensional uh, GPU array on the GPU that is for both CUDA and OpenCL. Uh, common right now, it's just us. It's our goal to be common. Uh, that's why we made it at the C level. It's not binded to Python. Uh, there's a Python binding that exists, but it is completely independent from the libgpu array itself. So why do we created a new object? It's a few years ago, we found that just in the Python community, there was at least six different GPU array objects. The fact that we have many different GPU array objects is that if one of the system have one functionality, it make it harder to port it to the different system. That's why we want to have something more common. Uh, we want it to work also with other language to port to ever more uh, community. That's why we made it at the C level. Uh, all those uh, different array also have different interface and they are mostly incom incompatible between each other. You need to think about it when you do the conversion between one system and the others because they don't have the same uh, memory layout properties and stuff like that. Uh, but they are all a subset of NumPy and DRA properties. That's why we try to mimic it at uh, the GPU level and the C level. This is the new backend for Teano. So the goal of this full stack, of this stack, is to be fast to develop a new machine learning algorithm and fast to execute. <laughs> Hi, hello everyone. Um, so I'm Bart, I'm a first year student at the lab and I'm going to talk a little bit more about Theano, give you an example of how it works and I'll talk a little bit more about Pylon 2 which is the project I'm mainly working on. Fred is uh, more of a developer in Theano. So, um, so 
quick recap. So TNO is a mathematical symbolic expression compiler. Um, we, it, it mimics NumPy syntax up to the point where very often you can actually use code that will work both on a NumPy array and on a TNO variable. You don't have to change anything. Um, in the background, it creates all the C and CUDA code using a variety of methods, uh, whichever one you want to use, PyCUDA, site, and num number to create the, the kind of fast running code that we want. But because we're working with a, uh, a symbolic graph, a computational graph, um, we can do uh, efficient differentiation. Um, and before we actually compile um, our code, uh, we can do a lot of speed and stability optimization. So you can look at the graph and you can see which combinations of operations would, could become numerically unstable. You can replace these uh, computations with alternative computations, which give you the same result, but in a more numerically stable way. Uh, and often, if you apply certain operations in a sequence and they, you know, in the end turn out to be the identity, you can just kind of take out that part of the graph, optimize in, in another way. Um, so Tieno is really good at if you give it very kind of numerically unstable things or tiny numerical values like log one plus x, then it'll give you the right answer even for kind of like these values on the fringe. Um, Tieno has very extensive unit testing and self-verification. So in general, it's it's pretty good that even with all the optimizations, you know that the answer that comes out, um, you can be pretty confident it's, it's numerically the correct answer. Um, it works on, on Linux, but also on Mac. Uh, it works on Windows. Um, as Fred mentioned, um, it uses a GPU. You can use the GPU very easily. Um, it's as simple as setting one environment flag in, in your shell, and it'll automatically switch between CPU and GPU. It's very easy for development. Um, although on GPU right now, it's just 32-bit uh, floating point numbers. Uh, although once libgpu array becomes a new backend to Theano, uh, we'll have support for a lot more. And on Windows, um, support is limited in the sense that none of the developers actually use Windows, but everything should work fine as it is. Um, and sparse operations are only on CPUs. Um, so here's a simple example of, of how you'd use um, Theano in, in Python, so you just import the framework, um, you, you declare your, your symbolic vectors, in this case it's a vector with floating point values, you build your symbolic expression, so you use the kind of notation you use from NumPy or from Python itself. Um, so in the background, Python converted this into a symbolic graph, uh, which is a plus a to the power 10. Um, and once we actually want to do the numerical cal uh, calculation, we ask Theano to compile it. So we ask Theano for the part of the graph that takes A as an input and gives B as an output. In the background, Theano will see which part of the graph it needs, optimize it, make sure it's numerically stable, compile it to C code, and then give you a Python handle to this compiled uh, code. Uh, you can actually then pass Python values to it, it'll run the computation, and it'll give you a nice NumPy array back. So here's an example of, of the graph we've just created on the left. Um, and on the right, you see what the graph looks like uh, after Theano has kind of optimized it. So you see that the kind of graph optimization helps speed things up quite a lot because large graphs can often end up being very small if you optimize them. Um, so Theano has been around for a while, uh, over six and a half years. Uh, it's been used a lot in research, especially at our lab. Um, it's it's a tool almost everyone uses. Uh, so over the years, it's, it's pretty well documented, we think. Um, it's got um, a lively mailing list, but also with a lot of people from outside of our lab. Um, it's also used in industry. A few startups have used it. Google have used it. Yahoo uses it. Universities teach it. Um, so all in all, it's, it's pretty stable and I think well-supported software. Um, so then a little bit about PyLearn2, which is the kind of machine learning framework as Fred mentioned, built on top of it. So the idea of PyLearn2 is that it provides you bits and pieces that you need in machine learning, and uh, you can kind of use, use each of them separately. So you can implement your own model in Python, and as long as you make sure that the kind of a few basic interfaces are there, you can use PyLearn2 training algorithms to train it, or you can do it vice versa. You can write the model in PyLearn2 and use your own custom training algorithm to train it. So a few of the kind of objects and, and uh, bits and pieces that it provides are the training algorithms, uh, like SGD, 
uh, but also more model specific uh, <laughs> algorithms. Um, it provides costs, so different ways of calculating supervised, unsupervised cost, exact estimated cost, so magnetic block likelihoods, core matching, noise contrastive estimation, etc. Um, there's a few uh, monitoring methods which allow you to monitor all sorts of parameters and hyperparameters, which are very important during the training of, of neural networks. Um, so even the kind of want to determine to stop training your termination criteria, even those are kind of all factored out, so you can use them very individually. So if you want to do something strange with you know ending your training at a different point in time, then you can just kind of use everything from Pylon two, but only change that part. Um, so training extensions can be are can be used to kind of perform other actions during the training process. Uh, then there's your actual models. So a lot of a lot of them have been implemented in Parallel 2, so it's mostly used for neural networks, doing convolutional networks, but you can also uh, do restricted Boltzmann machines, deep Boltzmann machines, and even the, the kind of more traditional SVMs, K-means, PCA, like everything um, is implemented in Parallel 2, and you just kind of use it um, as is. The data sets, so there's, there are data set wrappers for kind of the most common data sets uh, that we use, so MNIST, C410, um, so if you just kind of want to use Pylon 2 in your own data set, you just write a wrapper, plug it in, and everything should work. Um, as Fred mentioned, you can do it in two ways. You can uh, just uh, access Pylon 2 from your Python scripts, but you can also use YAML files. So those are just text files where you kind of say, I want this model, I want this training algorithm, I, was, I want these hyperparameters. You load it into Pylon 2 from the command line, and it should just train. Um, one other kind of abstraction Pylon 2 adds is um, data specification, so instead of working with the raw data, we describe how Pylon 2 should interpret this data. So if you have your, your labels for MNIST, which are just integers, uh, that's a 1D array of integers, but you tell Pylon 2 to interpret it as indices, so it can automatically convert between that and one hot vectors, um, or it can automatically convert between images and, and kind of, for example, flat uh, floating point arrays. So the kind of data specification structure we have is actually quite powerful and very uh, allowing Parlin2 to, in the background, move between all of these different representations of numerical data. Um, so you don't have to worry about that, whether your, whether your words are represented as integers or one-hot vectors. It does all of that automatically for you. Um, Parlin2 has been, hasn't been around as long as, as Tiano. Um, but it has been used in, in quite a few scientific publications as well. It's been used to compete and I think win Kaggle competitions. Um, and a lot of people at our lab use it. Um, it's still developing very quickly. Although we've tried to make sure that now the API doesn't change, any, change anymore. So you don't have to worry about starting to use it. Uh, documentation for like the core parts are all there and they're quite good. Um, but working very hard and trying to get all, like, all the parts of the library documented. Um, and that's quickly improving. But we do have an active mailing list, so if you have any, want to use it and you have any questions, you can always email, and uh, you'll be sure to get a response, like mostly within a day. Um, there are a few features which uh, you know, are currently being developed, which I think are very interesting. So recurrent neural networks are currently being implemented. Uh, better hyperparameter search report, all of that stuff is being worked on and, and should be in there within like, the next couple of months. Um, so now I'll give it back to Fred, who's going to talk a bit more about the details of the libgpu array. So, uh, as told, uh, the goal of the project is to be common. So the base object is in C, and we want people from all other uh, software to use it. But we want it also to not be too much simple. Many of the uh, systems that have a uh, GPU ob object just support, for example, a fixed number of dimensions like uh, matrices. We want to be generic to be able to cover much more uh, different type of uh, algorithm and domain. Uh, we want to support all the type. We want to keep threaded views to limit the number of memory copy and lower the memory usage. But we also want to make it easy to add new implementation. So if we have a much more complicated uh, <coughs> memory layout, or at least a possibility of having a more complicated memory layout, we have also many uh, functions to automatically convert 
with uh, the basic uh, memory layout like C Fortran or Fortran Order memory layout. That way, if you want to add a new functionality, you don't need to take care about all the added complexity if you don't want to, because you just want to go fast with a new implementation. So uh, currently, you can use it, uh, but it's not all implementations that are available. The multiple GPU uh, backend at the libgpu array level uh, work. Uh, this is already used by Teano, but not by default. There's still a few of the current uh, GPU implementation that have not been ported to the new system. For the OpenCL uh, version, it also works in Teano, but it missed more uh, functionality. And the multiple uh, GPU is on the way. So in conclusion, uh, this stack of software tried to provide a good uh, environment for our uh, communities where it is fast to develop and fast to execute at the same time. So I would like to, talk, uh, to thank all people working or having work at Lisa, all Teano Parent 2 user contributor. Even if you don't contrib contribute code, it's pretty helpful to know that some error message is not good. Having feedback from the user is always great. It allows us to uh, make the software better. And we want, to, uh, we want also to thank all, all, all our funding agencies. Thank you. Bye.